welcome to Mini Moderns. My name's Simone and thank you for joining me on my tiny corner on the miniature web where we're here to think big, build small. So let's get into it. So today for my second diorama, I'm going to be showing you how I made this modern rustic living room for Christmas Eve with a cheeky Santa. We're going to find out what he's been up to. I'm going to use some of my prompts from my miniature prompt journal to get this going. But for part one, we are going to look at the interior design and putting it together. And part two, we're going to show you how I put all of these furnishings together from scratch and see what the story is. Let's get into it. So to get started today, guys, we're going to be using my miniature prompt journal, which is available on Amazon if you want to get this yourself. I did create this book just as a way of keeping track and being inspired to do something new every time. Um, I used this for my first diorama, which was great because now I can look back at my starting process and my finishing process. And it's just so nice to have a reference and see what materials we use. So definitely recommend this for anyone who's new or anyone who's been doing this for a while who wants to try and maybe step outside of the box. So we're gonna look for the prompt that we're gonna to use today. Um, I already have in mind kind of what I wanna do. So I'm gonna try and get to it. But as you can see, there's loads of different prompts. You can make your prompt as big and as small as you want. So if you're doing a pillow, you can just do a small pillow on its own or make it a part of the scene like what I'm going to do here with this rug. So I've chosen rug for my prompt and there's over a hundred to choose from as well, guys. So I will leave a link in the description for this. So what, how you want to do this, you put the start date and I am starting on the 2nd of December, 2023. Obviously the end date, you put that down when you've actually finished. What scale, I'm going to do 1 12th scale and then what materials so to start with i roughly know what materials i'm going to use but as i progress i'm going to change it and add more and then write how i was feeling and just my thoughts making this in general there's loads of things to do i'm really excited to go through this as well and i hope those of you who've got it are excited to work through this as well and i really do appreciate your support and hope you find some value in this Next up before we get started is my dollhouse note and sketchbook, which is also available on Amazon, which I'll leave a link for. This book is so useful for keeping everything together, all your ideas, your measurements, your creations in one place. So I've sketched out what I wanted to do for today. So it's gonna be our night before Christmas diorama with a naughty Santa Claus. Um, we'll explain or I'll explain the situation as we go along. But my feature in this is obviously the rug. It's gonna be telling a story and I wanted to jot it down. Um, with this notebook as well, you can write down anything. So I've already got ideas for my next project, future kits, and you can look back again. And here is where my original design for the Halloween diorama was. So it's just great. Here's the moving van kit, just some sketching and ideas for that kit that will eventually come together. It's taken a while, not gonna lie guys. <laughs> but today we're gonna crack on with this. I am thrilled and excited. And um, hope my vision comes to life. And that's what it's about when you get it down on paper and then you bring it to life. That's what we're trying to do here. And finally for the organization, this is my work log, my spending log. So I've been able to track what I've spent on my miniatures through the year. Some people hold their head in shame. I certainly do. <laughs> um, November, please don't look. It was a tough one. And we're already in December. We're only on the 2nd of December and <laughs> I've already started. So I dread to think what the end is. But with all of our equipment and things that we need in place, it's time for us to get started. So we're gonna start by using white foam board at 11 by eight inches for the floor and for the wall. The, um, the back wall is gonna have a fireplace in the middle and then the two side panels is gonna be shelving. You can see the measurements there. We're also gonna have a window wall, which is gonna be eight by eight and a plain wall, which is not gonna have anything on. The window itself is going to be four inches by four inches and if you want to convert this into millimeters which i tend to do i do prefer working in millimeters for some reason um it's 102 millimeters and we can just cut that out and get this window on the way it's a uh, really pretty straightforward just use your exacto knife or exacto blade 
and just cut through this and pop out the window really nice and simple like this then we grab some coffee stirrers to make the frame for the window i will leave a link in the description for everything that i'm going to be using on this project i have recently joined the amazon affiliate so anything that you see in here that you like and you click on the link i will get a tiny percentage of this and it will help towards gradually being able to get more better equipment and better recording for yourselves so i'm also going to just use the miter blade to just cut through this and get the angles i'm using the same techniques that i did in my first video for the mock-up room to make the window frame so it's just exactly the, fr the same just make sure you get it lined up and glued on beautifully i'm going to be using wood glue to stick mine together as well Ta -da! I'm going to be using cardboard for the base structure of my fireplace i just i'm going to double this up so it's a little bit more sturdy and firm for what we are about to do guys so i've got the side panels the the shelving all of this is going to represent the fireplace and i'm going to just simply stick these together with some hot glue and some pva glue done I'm going to make the frame of the fireplace simply by sticking all of these pieces together now but before I do that I've just got to cut out the hole for the fireplace. Now with the hole cut out I can actually put the frame of this fireplace together. I'm just simply going to stick all of the little pieces that I've made to make the structure of this fireplace um, I'm just going to use PVA glue just to stick that down and just really push it down and make it really nice and secure and until you've got the actual base frame so it looks something like this now I'm going to add on the rest of the trimmings which I'm really excited for because this is when it starts to come to life I pressed it up against my wall just to make sure that it measures and it's working perfectly fine which it does and I'm super happy about this and I'm going to just show you here the the design that I have is to kind of have the fireplace like a built-in to the wall type fireplace so there's going to be shelving on the actual fireplace itself let's get all of these pieces stuck on basic structure completed Whilst I'm working on the structure, I also decided to make the pieces I would need for the end outer frame support. It's going to be foam board as well, but I just wanted to get those cut and ready. So when we're ready to wrap this up at the end, I've already got my pieces, the roof and the side pieces already done. I also felt it was a good time for me to start working on my lighting from early. I'm going to use a tea tree light for the actual fireplace, which is going to be the lowest dimmest flicker because I want the fire to have actually burnt out. So you're not really going to see that light much. I'm also going to be using a 9V battery to control the actual lights that I will be using for the rest of the house for the ceiling and the lamps. It will be my first time ever trying to wire up a dollhouse properly nervous but excited so now i'm just going to mark up exactly where i want the lights to go on the back wall um i'm kind of happy with that until i'm not happy so i'm going to put the holes in and then i realize actually i want them a little bit higher up because i think it will look better and it gives me more shelf space just testing that the lights will actually fit through that and it really will and i'm so happy but as i said i'm going to move it up a little bit more just so that we have some more space for shelving later on i'll be sealing this so no worries about that and i was just testing that everything is going to connect up but because i've got a ceiling light as well that i want to connect to this i'm going to have to do some real wiring later on <laughs> we'll see how it goes but that all connects up next the fun messy part guys we're going to need some egg cartons or drink cartons you can get these from amazon i will leave a link in the description as i said for anything that i'll be using um, so you can actually buy these or you can just save them up which i have shamefully you can see how much mcdonald's I drink. anyway let's not talk about <laughs> also i use these black gloves you'll see me using a lot of these in my projects because i have kids and i normally have to stop and start and then having dirty fingers and washing them every time eh, no thanks so yeah get your gloves we're going to use some of this filler this wall filler you might call it joint compound or spackle i'm not sure what you call it where you are but here in the uk it's just joint filler um wall 
filler basically washable pva white glue uh some baby oil because you know you gotta look nice and lathered up when you know joking we're gonna need this for real um a sieve and some flour so these are the ingredients we're going to need for the next part guys because we are going to be making paper mache clay yeah from scratch you heard me so get your surface nice <laughs> because it's going to get messy and here is the egg cartons that i left i left this overnight actually just in plain boiled water i just left this to get really sloppy and yucky my kids were like yo what is this in the kitchen but yes once it's done you can then blend it up again this blender is what i use for all of my craft so it's not mixed in with my kitchen stuff i use this for sawdust and whatever else i need to craft so you want it mashed up and blended up like this i'm going to use the old top and tail bowl that my baby doesn't use anymore so it's grimy because of the paper mache that i'm making okay guys so what you want to do is really squeeze out your drink cartons now it's like a paste but you want to squeeze it out but not too much you want to leave a little bit of liquid in there and then we're going to be using this to get started so once you've squeezed out your mixture put them all into some kind of container um roughly equal amounts the next time i do this i'll probably measure them exactly so we know what we're working with so we've got the the filler the cartons crushed and the flour we're going to be mixing these all together so first i'm going to crumble up the carton mix that i've already made um there's so many different recipes for making this paper mache this i kind of mix a combination of my own and there's a channel called ultimate paper mache check it out she does everything to do with paper mache so I've taken some of her ideas and some of mine and I've just kind of come up with my own combination. So I'm adding a little bit of the PVA glue just to get it going and then really get in there and mix it up. You're going to start feeling the texture change and that's exactly what you want. And then we're going to just keep on adding the ingredients until we're happy with the consistency. That's looking really good. Now I'm going to add my joint compound. Remember the one I showed you earlier? This one. We're going to add that first. Remember which is which when you're doing this so you don't mix the flour. It doesn't really matter actually because you're going to put them both in. So give that a really good mix. Then we're going to add the flour and give that a really good mix as well. Keep adding your filler, your flour, and then get that baby oil in there because it's going to change the texture up just enough. And just keep on adding i actually ended up using everything that i put into the containers so my hand eye coordination of measuring was absolutely perfect for me i have no nothing to go by in terms of consistency in real life but for me it was what it worked really really well um and i'll show you a little bit later on so knead all that mix all that then i decided to add a secret ingredient a bit of corn flour I only had a little bit left it was the perfect amount i just you know it's a thickening agent so i just threw that in there so just just do what you need if you're making this from home yourself it's really handy i still have some left now and you can store it in the fridge for long life it's absolutely turned out really really great especially for what we're about to do so just mix that in and then let's get ready you kind of want to knead this as if he was making some kind of dough for bread or something i wanted to get my hands involved and feel the texture and i was really really very happy and pleasantly surprised so to seal this i just used some cling film and an airtight container and to preserve it it's just the best way that i found and keep it in the fridge it's i don't know how long this will last for because currently i still have some I, even though I went to town and used a whole bunch of this, I absolutely love, love the stuff and I'll be making more. Now we're going to actually use this to make the fireplace. So the first thing we're going to do is use some foil to kind of protect the cardboard and give our clay something to kind of hold on to. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this all with foil. I then started to wrap the edges in uh, uh, masking tape and in a future project i'll probably wrap the whole thing in the foil and then the masking tape as well because having done some practice with this now i realized that the masking tape actually helped it grip a bit more so you can see i kind of did around the edges here and i'm going to do around the edges of the top 
but in the future i will wrap the whole thing in masking tape so future self note <laughs> so now it's time to add the clay and it is really great to work with it's very easy very smooth and it kind of it really it does stick well to the foil i just feel like if i added more masking tape it could stick better but you never know so yeah you just smooth this on and you can also just use some water as well to kind of smooth out any uneven tones and i just love this because i wanted to go for a stone fireplace i wanted this to kind of represent stone <laughs> in the best way possible because we are working on a modern rustic type of um, home and i really wanted a lot of dark light wood stone tones in this house and this kind of clay for me it was perfect because i could have used other clay which would have been a lot smoother but the grit the grittiness you can see kind of the cracks in this already but you can smooth those out with just water if you wanted to do that alone so i'm going to use my nail dotting tool to make the cobblestone effect on this fireplace I probably could have used better tools, which I get a bit later on down the line, but this is what I had at the moment. And I found it really handy to kind of make a lot of uneven slabs. Um, I know a lot of people use the egg carton in a different way and they just kind of stick it on. I guess I could have done that, but I wanted the clay because I knew there was other things I wanted to make with the clay as well. And I felt like I could get really, really stuck in there with the crafting of this fireplace and just using any tool that you have on hand and again using the water to smooth out certain areas is absolutely wonderful and here's what it looks like once i've put all of my indentations in it and my design and i really really love this i let it dry and now it's like solid as a rock and perfect for painting and getting ready i'm really happy with this formula um as I said, the link in the description for everything I use is available. So now it's time to make our armature. Is that what you say, armature? If that's what you call it, but this is gonna be our Santa. And I'm gonna just use, you, use some foil to kind of make his structure. And there will be no wire in this. It's just literally gonna be foil, masking tape and the clay that we've just used to make our little Santa. So what we do, we kind of cut a square and then we kind of form our own little body you just kind of trust the process in this to squeeze it together just really nice and slowly until you get the kind of formation of a human in some way so that middle piece is the head we've got the arms and we've got the legs <laughs> if you guys make armatures yourself please let me know how you guys do it but this is what I found to be kind of easy for what I was doing. I also used my little paper doll to make sure that I was in scale and I was. I was very proud of myself there. Great, great, great. And she pops in every now and again and so do the other ladies to keep me in scale. So now I just work the foil into the shape that I want and have it somewhat in the position that I want. And I'll just keep on working that until I'm happy with it. So Santa, he's going to be poking out of the fireplace. He's basically going to have been caught in the act a little bit later on. And he's trying to escape. He should have been gone a long time ago. But you're going to see why he's, he's caught in the act. So I need to chop off his head a little bit. It's a very strange figurine that I'm making, that's for sure. But it's going to work perfectly because we're not going to see his head. His head is going to be under the fireplace. And I'm really happy with this. And now I want to give Santa a little bit of a butt. A butt and a gut and a back <laughs> is what we're going to give him. So I make two little balls to stick on his back. <laughs> Don't laugh. So we're having balls on his back. And we're going to put those, secure those down with some of the masking tape. Just so we can get a bit more shape and i'm going to completely cover him with the masking tape and once he's covered we just give it a nice quick test and make sure he still fits into our fireplace which is fantastic he does i am so thrilled with this <laughs> this is the first time i think i will be making more of these in the future for sure so now with santa's skeleton complete we can get him with the clay i say get him like we're chasing him around or something no we can just make him with the clay and we're going to just stick that all around in the same manner that we did with the fireplace
there we have it he's nice and covered i've just gave it a little test fit and i am really really happy with this this clay has been absolutely amazing as i said i've got bunches of it so i'm gonna make a lot of stuff with the clay right now so here is our santa our headless santa and now it's time to kind of shape him a little bit more look at him <laughs> i absolutely love how this turned out so now let's get a little bit of definition on him i'm going to use my dotting tool again to kind of put all the definitions and in this circumstance i want santa's butt to be out you know he's had a bit too much to eat and drink and he's running away he's a bit sloppy this santa um so we're going to put some defined lines where his pants would be where his clothes would be uh, so later on we can paint it and style it how we want but i definitely wanted to showcase santa's bum i don't know why i'm so obsessed with his bum right now but yeah i wanted something like this where he was bending down and he's just a bit sloppy And using the same techniques of before, I wanted to make some antlers to put on the wall. As I said, this is rustic modern, but with a lot of natural handmade design in the home as well. So I feel like some antlers would look really nice on the wall. So same procedure as before, I'm gonna use the foil to wrap around the cardboard, and then I'm gonna wrap that up with the clay. I actually decided against wrapping it around and using it more as a template because I had an idea whilst I was in my creative moment and I just used my template, my cardboard as a template just to follow the design of the pattern and I think that kind of worked out much better for these antlers because they were quite fiddly and finicky to do but it actually worked out quite well. So I ended up making two of the antlers with the template and then merging them together to make a fuller form and it turned out really really cool I just used the water to really paste it down and obviously I ended up making two of these in total so four pieces with the template and then blending them together using the water to get a nice sturdy antler and here they are so i'm going to go ahead and let those dry along with the santa body and i am so happy with this so already we're starting to make a lot of detail and structure for this house we've got our antlers we've got the santa we've got the fireplace and i kind of wanted to make more so now with my newfound love of paper mache clay i wanted to make a vase and so what i did i cut a circle and i also had a half circle with the design or the kind of size of the vase that I wanted to make so I cut around this circle and I had another strip of cardboard that I wanted to use for the center of the vase that will be the hole where we'd put our flowers our water whatever it is we'd use it for so I just used one of my smaller little bamboo skewers to wrap my cardboard around and I used some hot glue just to stick that down and what we'll do is place this in the center of the circle so we've got a little foundation for the structure so cut it add a little bit of hot glue and then just stick it in the middle of the circle just like this Boop. now using my little vase template i'm going to make more of them so that i can stick those around the little middle tube that we've made just so that i have some kind of fullness for the vase to kind of latch onto when i give it the paper mache clay you can see here i just draw around it then I fold it in half so I could make two for the price of one. Who's <laughs> got big brains? <laughs> yeah, so simply just cut around your shape. Once you've done that, just cut this shape in half and then just make an extra one just so you've got enough to go around this. Um, in hindsight, if you're making a different vase, I would say get some more vase shapes to fill in all of the gaps because you can just stick these on so you've got something like this, you know, just using the hot glue you can use hot glue for this stage because we are going to be covering it but for other vases and tests you can go ahead and fill in all of those extra gaps just so that you've got a more fuller shape but for the style of vase that i want to do this was absolutely perfect for me so now i'm going to go ahead and add the masking tape so now i just take small pieces of the masking tape and go around the vase covering it up so that there are no gaps so when i add my clay I've kind of already got a shape to work with 
and um, because I've got the four corners there I want those quite defined so I'm going to make sure when I wrap the tape that you can still see those four corners because it's going to help for the shape of the vase that I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and add my clay now and using a bamboo skewer to kind of hold my vase in place I just lay the clay all over it and then we start to define the shape a little bit later on and the, the bamboo skewer is really helpful for one for holding it and two keeping the hole that we're going to need later on and so you can see it's very very smooth right now because I'm adding water as I go along I said you can make it as smooth or as dimply and bumpy as you like and as I'm going to use the corners of my template to help me style this so as you can see now with the clay all around we're getting a little bit more shape for the bars and I'm absolutely loving working with this clay I think I'm obsessed guys um, I'm going to be doing so much more work with clay and a lot more in-depth tutorials for anyone else who wants to know how to do this and eventually I will be making some stuff to put in my Etsy store as well for anyone who wants to purchase these things as well because I love them. It's really start starting to take shape now and again I am just using my little bamboo stick to kind of get the details that I want around the rim and it looks really great so now that it's dried it's got that really aged vintage type of look and it's perfect for what I was trying to do I did get carried away guys I told you I love making these they're lots lots of them <laughs> I've made all kinds of shapes and sizes and textures and I really love working with this and I'll be working with a lot more we've got some clocks here we've got some modern some antique some aged rustic you name it you could do a lot with this and depending on how you paint it you can change the how the texture is but absolutely love this paper mache clay and while sticking with the clay i wanted to get as much of this done at once as possible because it is air drying clay so i have to give it a lot of time to dry so i made as much things as possible with the clay so i decided to make myself a bowl and also some antler chandeliers yep Going with a rustic, modern, really chic kind of unique style, I believe. Um, so I wanted some antlers as the chandelier. So there's going to be a bowl which is held up by antlers, which is held up by a tree stump. So I go ahead and create this and I'm really happy with how the form turns out in the end. It's very random but I feel like it will go with the theme of the house once we start putting everything together. So I stick my antlers <laughs> around the bowl and I just keep on building and forming until I'm happy with the design. And here are all my extra pieces once they have dried. Here's the base of my chandelier and it looks, maybe it looks creepy or weird, but I kind of like it. I want this house to be very unique. It's all hand sculpted, so you know, it's going to be different. And that's what I wanted it to be. The people who live here, they're very much into nature and wood and textures. And I wanted to try and convey that. And this will be kind of like a wood stump that is holding the antlers together and hanging from the ceiling, this will be. So I just want to make sure that my the lights that I'll be using will actually fit through there. So just a quick test. I've made the, the same little tube that I did before. I made it here and it fits perfectly absolutely perfect now with all the clay work done i'm going to start working on the textures for the wall i'm going to use our filler so it's going to require two parts filler to one part water for this mixture so i slowly add the water to the mixture bit by bit until i get a really nice smooth consistency instead of pouring it all in at once um, i found that this just gave me a really good texture that i was looking for now I can start adding this to the walls and this is so cool. I literally just paste it on. I didn't want to just put paint directly onto the foam board. So I figured adding some of this wall filler will be a great texture and it makes the wall a little bit more sturdy as well for when we paint it a little bit later on white. <laughs> so we're going to have a lot of said white stone wood tones in this rustic home. And I'm just going to fill this now all of the walls we're going to fill them with this joint compound for the back wall with the fireplace i'll be leaving the middle strip alone because as you can see we'll be painting that black and the two sides is what i want the texture to be on so here it is now 
This is the plain wall with no window. It looks absolutely great. You can see the textures popping off the wall and I think it's going to look wonderful once it's all together and we've got the furniture and everything else in there. And here's the window frame. Again, you can see all the textures, imperfections. I think it's perfect for what we're trying to do. And again, here is the back wall. Wonderful. So with the leftover wall filler, I decided to make some wall art. So using some balsa wood, I just simply just put some of the filler all over the wood and just create some unique, nice designs. One of them, I keep it really nice and kind of plain. And the other one, I add some tissue and textures. So it looks really, really cool and unique. With that done, I can now start painting the back wall on the floor where the fireplace will be black. And I'm simply going to use some lamp black and some Mod Podge gloss to make this. Once I'm happy with the mixture, I'm just going to add this to the back wall. And again, we won't be able to see the back wall, but we will be able to see a little bit underneath where the whole of the fireplace is. And I wanted to make sure every piece of this diorama slash room box is filled with detail. So I'm going to put this all over the back wall and then I'm going to add some texture to it with some foil. And it's just really nice and simple. And once you get the foil, you kind of just press it on and it, boop, you see, it makes this nice texture all around. And I think it will look really nice when you can see that through the fireplace, just like this. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, it's not much, but it's enough. I just want to clean up the back of this fireplace as well, even though it won't be seen again. I can see it and I know how it looks and I just want to clean it up so I'm going to stick some foam board in the middle and some craft board along the side and then paint them all black as well just to clean it up a little bit. I'm also going to add some black paper along the trimmings and the strip. Again this won't be seen but I want it to look good <laughs> and it will like give me something solid to stick on the back once we're gluing this to the wall. So it just looks like this. Nothing major, I said you won't see it, but at least it all looks clean and uniform with what I'm trying to do. So now we can get to the fun task of painting this bad boy. So I'm gonna use my range of acrylic paints that I've got here to try and come up with a lovely blend of different brown tones that we can use for this fireplace. I wanna go with a fieldstone kind of texture, um, but a dark undertone. So I'm gonna see how many different combinations I can make with these colors that i've got so i mix yellow red orange and then just add in dabbles of green and anything that i can choose to make the right kind of tones i'm looking for in my mind and adding this little bit of green here really helps the brown pop how i wanted it to and i do that again with a few of the different colors here so here i've got my cream tone with just the brown and the white acrylic paint and then over here with my orange and yellows i add a little bit of blue to get a little bit of a deeper darker almost off purple kind of brown but again these are all the textures that i feel that will work really well for this fireplace now this is the fun part of bringing this all together so if you're doing this yourself you can choose what kind of tone that you want your fireplace to be i'm going to be using my lamp black and mod podge to bring in the darker undertone but if you wanted to do this yourself you could actually use white and it'll make your colors a lot brighter at the end so I'm adding my black undertone and then I'm wiping it off at the same time because I don't want it to be too runny or thick but I do want it to have that nice base that is going to kind of suck in all of the rest of the paints that we've got. So now with the whole thing painted I can go ahead and add those extra brown tones that we just created. This isn't even fully dry yet. I wanted to see if with the black on there if it will suck up some of the browns. So you could experiment with this and let your project dry completely before adding new colours. But I wanted to see what it would look like if it was still semi wet when I put the other paints on. Because as I said, I really wanted this to blend in. So I'm going to add all of the different browns and the different tones that I, um, we created earlier to come up with a nice little patchwork of fieldstone cobblestone. Also, I do wipe off some of the paints as well. Again, I do not want the browns to be in your face. I want them to really submerge into the background. And I'm going to go ahead and add all the different colors and see what it looks like. 
it's really starting to take shape now and adding the lighter browns as well to give it some extra color right now it doesn't look like much but you've got to trust the process it's something that i'm learning as well because at first i was like hmm is this going to blend in the way i want it to but it does guys and i think it's a preference thing when you're making stuff like this because as i said you could go really gray really white really brown it's completely up to you how you do this so once you've got all the colors on just using a damp tissue or just a dry tissue you can just wipe off some of those heavy chunks of paint that you've got on there and then let them absorb in so now i'm going to be using my filler my wall filler to fill in the grains and now bring in some of that really cool stone texture and i think this does a, a fantastic job of that i'm just using my finger to rub this in but you could use a paintbrush if you like um you could even try and add the water mixture that we did before for the walls and see how that would look but i knew that i almost wanted a dusty effect at the end so now i'm using the paintbrush to kind of get the grooves and clean out all the little pieces and now you can see the browns are not so much in your face but they're really subtle in there and i just use a white bit a wet piece of um paper and then just to dab that a little bit so you can still see some of the browns but it's not too in your face and then we just keep this going dusting when we need to and then let this settle and dry i'm really happy with how this turned out in the end i go over it with a little bit of more of the wall filler to give it more of that stone texture but overall i'm really impressed now it's time to get this in the room so now it's time to stick this fireplace into the room i'm going to use some super glue and some wood glue and also some of the wall filler to seal this solidly to the back of the wall so now you can see the fireplace is finally on the wall and i am so chuffed i used some of the wall filler to fill around any gaps so you couldn't see anything and it looks like the fireplace is really fixed into the wall and then put the walls up so the fireplace is finally in its natural habitat <laughs> and now it's time for us to make the flooring i do this by using a piece of paper as a template and cut around any of the shapes that i need to make once i'm happy with the template i cut it and then i draw it onto some gray craft board which we are going to actually be using for our flooring so we do a second test before we make the floor itself and it's a perfect fit and now we are ready yay <laughs> so now we have the gray craft board ready to go measured up perfectly so we just cut this out and it's just a perfect fit i'm just going to round up some of the edges so it fits nice and snug to the fireplace i'm going to measure up how thick i want my floorboards to be so i'm simply just going to do half an inch in between each of the floorboards and i'm just going to pencil this on all along and then line them up I measured half an inch on both sides so that when I am lining it up that it is a straight line and this is a really simple way to make flooring look good and get a wood texture without actually using the wood I am really happy with how this ends up turning out so I'm going to go ahead and fill in all of these lines so you can see the floorboards I make my lines in the other direction doing the same thing except I do about a two inch gap in between on opposite lines so that when we're lining this up we can actually get that wood board effect so you can see for the second line i start an inch in but still leaving a two inch gap in between so it kind of has that nice little step pattern that we get with any kind of flooring so i'll just show you here this is where one two and it's going to be like this pattern all the way along and here you can see what it looks like when it's finished looks like a bit of brickwork but now we're going to add those wood textures using our exacto blade i'm going to score all of the lines that we've done on this and then i'm going to equally drag some lines along the floor the floorboard itself to give that wood texture when we start to paint it i'm going to be painting this with the lamp black and burnt umber but i really want a darker undertone so i'm going to be using more black than brown just to bring in some of that really dark undertone. Now just paint the whole of the craft board in this mixture. Perfect. Once that's all painted, you can use a wet wipe or a tissue just to pretty much wipe all that off and let's get that nice and dull so we can start seeing some of the wood tones that we actually scraped in ourselves and get some more definition before we add the gloss. I think if I was going for a different style room, I would just leave it as is. But as I am not, we're going to use some dark oak varnish. This is a high gloss 
um, varnish as well. I'm going to put this over it again to bring out some more of the wood textures that we've already created but I do like it as is and in another project I'll probably just do this as well. I'm going to coat the whole of this craft board with this varnish and then once I've finished coating it I'm going to wipe it off but give it a nice thick layer you don't have to coat straight away because it does actually take a while for it to settle but coat the whole thing in the varnish and then we're going to go in again and wipe it off we have a really nice shine on it but once we wipe it off it kind of just takes off some of that shine but still leaves a little bit behind and we're going to give it a double layer of this just to really make this look like wood and not craft board and you can see the way we wipe it it actually gives us a lot of extra um, lines and definitions and you can see the scoring that we did earlier and with that scoring it helped the floorboard not warp as much because you can fold and bend in the opposite directions so now we're going to give this the second coat and again we are going to wipe it off but this time when we wipe it we're not going to use a wet wipe we're actually going to use some of the brown paper you know that harsh paper you get because this again is going to give us some more wood lines and definition i find it really really cool so you can see here as i'm wiping it's actually producing some more lines I don't know if you can see, but if you look closely, it's actually giving us some more definition and making this look even more wood-like. So the sharp edges on the paper is causing the varnish to give us some more lines. And I'm so thrilled with how this ended up turning out. And now with that complete, we can actually add it to our room at last. And I'm so happy with it and it fits in absolutely perfectly. With the flooring in, the room is really starting to take shape now. It's now time to add the extra details that we need. So what I'm gonna use is some balsa wood for the fireplace shelving and the unit going around it. So I'm gonna prime this ready for painting because I have noticed it warps. So I'm gonna use some PVA wood glue mixed with some water to prime this ready for painting. I put this on the front back and sides <laughs> sounds like I'm doing a haircut or something yeah the front back and sides and then I just let that set and in the meantime I crack on with the other bits I had these sticks from an old wicker basket that I was going to throw and I'm like wait a minute why am I going to throw this away this is perfect I'm going to use these for the ceiling um one thing I've noticed is everything is usable now in my life things that I would have put to just regular recycling I'm like oh my gosh this is perfect I don't need to buy wood you can see it's got indentations and things that would look perfect for this ceiling beans to bring this whole rustic look together so I cut these to shape and now I'm going to prime and get them ready for the ceiling this is how they'll roughly look on the ceiling so I'm going to prime them with the oak varnish but I realized that it ended up coming a little bit too bright for what I was trying to do so I gave them the varnish first and then I went back over it with the, the darker paint because I really wasn't happy with how glossy and shiny it was for what we're doing for another project, maybe. So I hit it up with some of that dark brown paint that I left over barely, but it ends up working out just fine. It tones it down a bit and then it starts to work better with the vibe that we're going for in the room. So here you are now, you can see there are a lot darker tones, but you can see other layers coming through and it's just perfect, exactly what I was looking for. Time to stick them to the ceiling <laughs> let's go with the ceiling setting and drying it's time to move on to the next part completing our fireplace the balsa wood is set and ready to paint i cut out the shapes for the shelves and it's the same as the template that i used earlier on so it's absolutely perfect just doing a double check before i start painting things and I'm going to use the same brown and textures that we used to do the floor for the shelves. I'm also going to work on some beading for around the edge of the floorboards because I really want this to look nice and clean and how it would look in a real home. So using five millimeter strips, I'm going to use these to make my beading. Never done it before, but I felt like the room needed it. So once I've made two strips at five millimeters each, I'm going to cut those out and then I'm going to stick those together and repeat this a few times till I've got enough to cover the all of the skirting on our floorboards. Now I'm going to paint them all the same textures and colours as the shelving before. 
So just doing a quick test before I actually paint these to make sure I'm really happy with it. So they will fit in just like that. So here I'm just showing you, I'm painting them all together at the same time, doing the dark undertones, wiping it off, and then going back over it again with the gloss. And I also do the same for the frames of the window. I added some coffee stirrers and stick those down for the inner part of the frame. And I'm, cause I wanted to paint everything at the same time. I'm like, let's just do this at once. I'm gonna use some plastic to put underneath for our glass window and also using the board to kind of lined up where I want that middle strip for the window to go. I'm just using my board to make sure that it's an equal distance between so where I know exactly where I want to put my middle beam on the window. I paint this beam in exactly the same way that I've done the other shelving pieces and I stick that onto the plastic just so that I already have my window ready for when I'm going to put it in. In hindsight I could have painted all of the coffee stirrers before sticking them but I wasn't quite sure at the time of sticking them. So for future me, paint everything before sticking them in and I'll, I'll definitely do that in the future. But here you can see it fits in perfectly and that's the color that we're going for. So now I can just remove the window and it's ready to stick in when the time is right. I paint the window frame in exactly the same way that I've painted everything else. So I won't bore you with the tedious task of me trying to paint this with a brush too big, <laughs> but it was all painted in exactly the same way as all of the other stuff. So with all of our pieces painted, it's ready to start assembling this and putting it all together. I love all of the textures, but first we're gonna start with our window. And what I did was printed out images that I wanted as our view from the window. So you can see here, I'm just testing. This is the night before Christmas. It's early morning. People are going to be start right raising soon. So this tone, this picture here, I love it, but I'm not sure it was the right one. So I'm going to go ahead and go with this one with a little bit more light. I think it's going to work perfectly for the story. I'm going to cut this out and then I'm going to get this prepped and prepared and put onto our window. So first I'm going to stick our plastic window onto the wall. And then I'm going to add our picture. But before we do that, I'm actually going to add a little bit of fake snow around the edges because I think that's going to bring a bit more realism to the picture and not make it look like a picture. We're going to be looking out the window. It's a snowy Christmas Eve. Lucky for them, right? <laughs> and then we're going to connect and add this to our window frame. Yay, an actual Christmas Eve winter scene out of the window. And I think it looks really awesome. I added some of the little fake snow onto the middle of the picture as well. So it looks like it's landed on the middle of the window as well as around the edges. I am so happy with this. Back to sorting out this fireplace. And now it's time to stick everything together and bring this baby home. Let's go. With the shelving on, it's time for the beading. So what I do to line this up to get nice corners is add my first piece and kind of add like a pencil mark of where they would connect so the distance is right. This was kind of tricky to do but I think I found the formula to get nice clean matched up beading. Here I'm going to just show you how it looks. If you look closely you can see the pen mark I made where we need to cut to get our pieces to line up and I did the same on the larger piece as well so that they really will connect up so we just cut these off and you can see the angle there and I did the same on the first one as well so when we connect them together we have a nice blush beading and I'm going to do this around the whole of the, the fireplace it just gives it a nice clean look to the room also with the shelving that we're going to have on top of the fireplace I decided I wanted it a bit thicker so I used some foam board to add another layer to the shelves and then I just cut that out and I stick those together. I really love the look of these together with the brown and the white in itself so I would do that in a future project but for now I wanted this all painted so it looked like one nice thick slab that we can use for shelving. I put some little shelving hooks if you like to put the shelf on and just testing to make sure it all fits wonderfully. So now what I'm going to do is chip up the wood a little bit to make it look like it's not so clean and straight and then I'm going to paint it all. 
I also painted my wood support beams as well and chipped them up as well to give it that really natural wood texture and here's my final piece and I'm really happy with it it looks solid it looks firm it looks like it's not going to fall down any minute and hopefully it doesn't and here it is guys all looking really nice and unified together so now it's time for me to work on the actual shelves to go on the walls I make these shelves in exactly the same way that I make the shelf on the fireplace except instead of putting some varnish on these I'm going to hit it up with just some of the paint without the gloss because I like this muted tone and I think it needed a little bit of variation from all of the same pieces of wood I add some markings to the walls for where I want my shelves to go and I made some support beams to hold my shelves. Then I put them in. Wow, we've done it. The interior structure of our modern rustic home is complete, ready for Christmas Eve. So stay tuned for the next episode where we clean this up, add our furnishings and find out what Santa was up to. I hope you've enjoyed this guys and you've got some value from it. See you in part two. Like, share, subscribe.